Hi, Wine Delusters, and today we're in southern Tassie in the Coal River Valley and the Derwent Valley. Welcome to the Wine Delust podcast. My name's Janine and I run a wine events business in Canberra. But my real passion is travel and my bucket list is to travel to every wine region in the world. In this series, I'll be exploring some regional Aussie wine destinations. I'll give you some tips whether you're planning a romantic getaway, a girls weekend, or you're dragging the kids along. Pour yourself a glass and let's get exploring. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're talking about today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. So today we're in two regions and both of them are really close to Hobart, pretty much surround the city. The Coal River Valley is only about 20 minutes from the city of Hobart and from the airport and the Derwent Valley is just north of the city. It's only about 30 minutes in between both of those regions. Arriving in Hobart is a breeze. It's a smaller airport, so I found it not too crowded and everyone was very lovely and helpful. And car hire is really convenient just outside the door. You can drive out of Hobart and within minutes and a few roundabouts, you're in the beautiful rolling countryside. Both the Coal River Valley and the Derwent Valley are some of Australia's premium Pinot Noir growing regions. A little bit of history. As you can imagine, just being outside of Hobart, it's one of the first areas that the British settlers settled in. It was also used for convicts. The town of Richmond in the Coal River Valley dates back to 1823, when a bridge across the Coal River was constructed. The oldest bridge in Australia is still in use. So there's lots of people milling around to take photos. (laughs) And as you can guess, the name Coal River comes from the natural resources of coal in the area. The town of Richmond is a lovely historic little town. In the town square, you'll also see the wine wall and it has barrels there stamped with the names of all the wineries that have vineyards in the region. As you enter the town of Richmond, you'll see the Pooley cellar door on your right-hand side. So we had a wonderful tasting at Pooley Wines with Shelley, who's also the daughter-in-law of the couple that established the winery. And I got to catch up with their marketing manager, Ravi, to learn more about Pooley Wines. He's super informative, and I think you'll enjoy this chat. Can you tell us a little bit about Pooley Wines and their history? So Pooley Wines, we were established in 1985 by the late Jack Dennis and Margaret Pooley. They started Pooley as a retirement plan, um, having planted their first vineyard out in Campania at a vineyard called Coinda Vale. Uh, This was something they wanted to do in their free time. They really didn't know what to do in their retirement, and what they decided was to plant a vineyard. They worked almost right up until their dying day, with Margaret Pooley retiring at 93 when she finally did decide to retire. Coinda Vale is located in the town of Campania. This is situated in the Coal River Valley, so we're very much looking at southern Tasmania. That was their first block there, because then they also got the one in Richmond. That's right. The vineyard itself is situated uh, a little bit north of the town of Richmond, where our cellar door is located. It's gorgeous. That's right. Yeah. This cellar door has been with us, you know, since we pretty much started and has grown a fair bit. Uh, Our cellar door offers structured and, you know, really in-depth tastings of several of our ranges. It also offers wood-fired pizzas on weekends, which have become really, really popular. Our outdoor dining area is really quite rustic and has this really classic sort of Tuscan feel. Like when we went through the outdoor dining area to go into the cellar door, like it's a very pretty view. And I think that Tuscan feel that you said really sums it up. So Yeah. And, you know, with, 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 the, with the architecture in the property itself coming from 1832, mm-hmm. you are looking at a piece of history when it comes to our cellar door and, and the family home uh, of the Pooleys. You know, John and Libby Pooley, our owners, live on that property and they're really fortunate to be, you know, surrounded by such an incredible scene. So John, John Pooley uh, took over the business once his parents had finally decided to retire. Dennis passed away with Margaret continuing to work in the vineyards uh, and with Pooley Wines up until she was 93. John then took over the business with his daughter Anna uh, coming back into the business as our winemaker. His son Matthew being the original viticulturist that set this vineyard up, now working as a brand representative. Pooley these days, uh, our viticulturist is now Hannah Mackay. She is heavily involved in organics and biodynamics, and that's really the, the trajectory that we see ourselves moving towards with her involvement. The business has now expanded with our wines primarily being focused on our Chardonnays, Pinots and Riesling. That's what we see ourselves doing best, and that's really where our focus is because we are you know, lucky enough to be in such a brilliant, cool climate region, um, and the Coal River is really such a diverse range of microclimate. 
for a lot of people, they're not really familiar with the Coal River Valley. And most people aren't familiar with Tasmania being uh, the second driest, if not driest, in the country. So no. Wow. Coal, I didn't know yeah. that. I knew it was yeah. cold, but I didn't realise uh, it was it, so dry. Yeah. We're, we're definitely cold, but, you know, Tasmania as a, as a reputation has a reputation for being quite wet, which is rightfully so. The west coast of Tasmania is known for being quite wet because you get a lot of that oceanic influence, whereas the east coast, you're actually looking at some of the driest parts of Australia. Um, you know, the Coal River Valley on average sees about 300 to 400 mil of rainfall annually. So we are looking at a region that is quite dry and also quite exposed. Uh, we're quite fortunate to have really long hours of sunlight throughout the growing season. So, you know, it, at some points in the year, you can see the sun setting at 9.45 in the evening at the peak of summer. So we have these really long days. We have, you know, relatively mild conditions uh, and you know, we're blessed with both a continental and maritime influenced climate. So the Coal River itself is quite diverse. We find our Coinda Vale vineyard being in the warmer part of the Coal River, but due to something which is diurnal range, uh, we see really warm days and then really cold uh, or cool evenings, whereas our Butchers Hill property being situated on these really gorgeous north-facing slopes really see some warm days, but they really see that warm evening uh, come through as well. To talk a little bit about the soil profiles, our Coinda Vale vineyard sits primarily on alluvial soils, so sand, silts, loams over impervious clay, and the vineyard itself sits, is situated at about 80 metres to 100 metres above sea level, so it does feel quite low-lying, whereas the Butchers Hill vineyard, uh, it's quite dramatic in how it's how it's set out. You know, the vineyard's on this gorgeous hill uh, with the driveway starting at about 30 metres above sea level, getting all the way up to 100. So you are looking at a lot more elevation and a lot more slanting in the slopes. The majority of vines do sit between north and northeast, so you do get a lot of that afternoon sun and pretty much sunlight throughout the entire day, resulting in more ripening. The Butchers Hill property sits primarily on soils that are of a black cracking clay uh, over sandstone sort of nature. So so we do find that this property tends to produce really generous, really rich, really, you know, I would say more medium to full bodied wines in comparison to that of our Coinda Vale property, which is much more, you know, measured, much more elegant, uh, much more, I guess, I guess elegance is the right word. You know, you're looking at classical climate wine there. Ravi, can you tell everyone about the Tassie Dozen Freight Scheme? Because I found this out when I was in Tasmania recently and you helped me out with it. Yeah, of course. So the Tassie Dozen is a really great initiative that's been introduced by Wine Tasmania, the governing board uh, of, of wines in Tassie. Um, the Tassie Dozen is really meant to promote the idea of, uh, I guess, a collective, a collective experience. You know, Tassie is still seen as a fairly small region, but there are so many growers and producers within Tasmania that may not necessarily have the means of shipping wines themselves. And what this allows is for people who are visiting Tasmania to really get a taste of the region as a whole, where you can buy wines from one vineyard and take those wines, you know, across Tasmania. Uh, the very last vineyard you visit, um, if they're partaking in the Tassie Dozen, you can actually take all of the wines that you've purchased from all the other vineyards and get them shipped to your home from that last vineyard. Yeah, this is really so people can experience, you know, all of Tasmania and people can really you know, look at their favourites across the, the entire state and pick their favourites and get them sent home. And finally, since you live in Tassie, what's your local tip for people visiting the area and visiting the Coal River Valley region? Obviously, visit Pooley Wine Cellar Door. But on top of that, <laughs> yeah. what's something else that they should do? I mean, I guess the first tip is always have a jacket handy because you really do get <laughs> four seasons in a day. But I think for me, it really is trying to spend more time in the Coal River. The Coal River is such a diverse region where you don't just have wineries, you've got really high-end art artisanal products and you've got lots of experiences within the Coal Rivers. Hit those wineries up, you know, go eat some lunch at Coal River Farm or at Waddle Banks in Richmond. Make sure you stop into all the little towns because there's really an in important part of history in each of these towns that, that Tassie's really capturing. So I'd say if you're yeah, visiting Tassie, drink wine, eat food, go on a walk, do do all the things that we're known for. Oh, that sounds yeah. wonderful. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, Ravi. Yeah. Another local winemaker is Greer Carland. She's made a name for herself being a finalist of the Young Guns of Wine for the past three years with her wine brand, The Quiet Mutiny. So her family started the wine label Laurel Banks in the Derwent Valley and you can visit by appointment there. I caught up with her at a great spot, Coal River Farm. It's a bit early in the day, so we enjoyed this chat over some coffee and a cheese platter. 
I'm meeting with Greer Carland from The Quiet Mutiny and we're at Coal River Farm which is not far from, we're surrounded by vineyards and this is a great cheese spot and we're sitting outside so you might hear a little bit of the wind ambience um, for our chat. So how long have you had Quiet Mutiny for? So the first ones were produced in 2017 um, but we didn't start selling till winter in 18. We just wanted to get our branding and our label tickety boo and you know we're really pleased that we took the extra time to do that. And I love the story on the website so how did you like find out about this story and can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah or? absolutely so um, my husband and I uh, really wanted a story that grounded us because when we started you know we, we don't own our own vineyard we hope to down the track but we really wanted a story that grounded us to Tasmania because that is such an important part of who we are and the wines that we make so we looked around for something that created a real connection and we came across this story of Charlotte Badger a convict who uh, was being transported to Van Diemen's land and uh, in the north of the state the captain disembarked to make some arrangements and she took the opportunity to seize the ship, have a mutiny and sail off to her freedom in New Zealand. That's awesome. And the reason it was a quiet mutiny because no one was harmed. And I mean my theory is we all need a quiet mutiny from time to time, don't we? And that's um, kind of the inspiration for for going out and creating our own brand. That's so cool. That's because um, I wondered if it was like a Tasmanian folklore that you all learned at school or something, but you just no, no. no we we searched through um, a lot of really amazing convict stories, and that one really stuck. Yeah, that I, one was really inspirational. Records of her living with the Maoris, uh, and then the records get a bit vague, but there's a line of thought that she was trying to make her way to to North America. So, I think for me, it's that moment when she went, you know what, I'm going to take charge of my own destiny. <laughs> yeah. I, I choose my own path. Yeah, that's and, what you're doing. That's so yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah. And you've been a Young Guns of Wine finalist three years in a row. Yes. yes. It's been really exciting to be part of that really awesome group of talented people. And this year a woman won it from yeah, Adelaide Hills. fantastic. Yeah. So do you find that the wine industry is still, because I guess I maybe seek out women winemakers so I feel like there's a few out there but I don't know if that's actually real I think it's still very male oriented industry is that would that be right or what do you yeah what's your experiences or there's definitely a lot more women coming into it uh, when I went to uni um, it, there was it was a little bit more of a boys club um, but there's a lot of amazing women um, coming into it and who've established themselves in it now and it, it's just a beautiful space, particularly in Tassie. We're so lucky to have um, just a great ratio of talented, inspirational, driven women making awesome wines. So oh, I feel so really good. privileged to be part of that group. Yeah. Your family has a winery as well, or a wine label, sorry. Laurel oh, Bank. Laurel Bank. They're up in the Derwent Valley? Yeah, so mum and dad are in Granton. They established it uh, in the mid 80s. So I grew up planting vines and driving tractors and awesome. pruning vines, um, which is I think why I found the winery <laughs> so appealing. <laughs> it just looked like a dark arts. You send the grapes in and wine comes out. <laughs> like it's alchemy. Yeah, it is fascinating. <laughs> So I went to university and uh, became a winemaker um, and I guess the rite of passage for many young winemakers is to travel around the world and go vintage to vintage. So I, I worked in Chile and oh, North wow. America and a couple of times in France uh, and then I worked over in Western Australia for a while uh, and then I was lucky enough to get a vintage back over in Tassie. And, and I've been here ever since in various roles. Yeah. And with um, the Quiet Mutiny, you saw scrapes from different parts of all over Tassie or just the southern part? Of it, it has been just southern Tassie, but yeah. this year I got uh, a really lovely parcel of uh, Pinot Meunier oh. from the east coast, uh, which I turned into a delicious rosé. Oh, fantastic. So, because that's the thing I find really interesting is that the whole of Tassie is that one geographical indicator, but there's these tons of little sub-regions is there differences with the land like absolutely yeah. yeah so I mean they're all different little pockets of microclimate so you do get different characteristics um, and they have different seasonal impacts so the wines are, are very much different but still within a Tasmanian context so there is always the debate of should should we split up but I think there's more power as a as a collective and it's it's like nuances um, of the Tasmanian style really in the in the different valleys and regions. 
for me, I find that the Derwent Valley, particularly in the reds, has a beautiful floral element, like a violet-y character, in, uh, whereas Pinot from the Coal River Valley, for me, has a beautiful raspberry intensity. And the East Coast tends to have a little bit more of that cherry intensity oh, as well. So, I mean, there's just tiny little nuances, yeah. and when you line them up all side by side, um, you should be able to see those, but obviously seasonal impacts are felt really strongly here in Tassie. I saw on your website you do the private wine tasting with the winemaker. Would you like to tell us a bit about that? Like yeah. and how people can book into that if they come to Tassie? Oh, absolutely. So I've done a few events um, where I've um, had a group of people who've come to me and we've uh, approached one of the restaurants that I work with and we've had a private event where we've done a, I guess a meet the winemaker style thing, but um, the clients have chosen the theme really. Um, I had a beautiful one a while back now with a, uh, a group of women who uh, wanted to get together and explore uh, women winemakers oh. and uh, they chose Quiet Mutiny and it was a really lovely evening to um, journey them through my story and my wine. Oh, so, that's fantastic. It's a yeah. perfect group of friends. Trip. Yeah, that yeah. sounds great. <laughs> I know you've got a nine-year-old and I've got a six-year-old. So if people come to, with families to this to Southern Tasmania, what's a great cellar door they can visit and or anything else they can do? Oh, look, Tassie's fantastic for families and the countryside itself. There's so many, so many great adventures in wine country in Tassie. Um, one of my favourite cellar doors to take little people to is Bangor down in Denali. Uh, beautiful, beautiful cellar door, beautiful wines. Um, they've got oysters as well from their local uh, neighbours. <laughs> And they've got this amazing outdoor space with a giant sand pit and a little Wendy house and, um, and chairs that overlook that area. So as an adult, you could be watching your children frolic around in front of you <laughs> whilst drinking a beautiful glass of wine and watching That sounds like a great scenery. afternoon. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that would be a fantastic place to go. And what are some of your other cellar door tips for, for like romantic weekends or for girls trips away or... I think really the ones that are a little bit off the beaten track are always good. Um, I love little places like Derwent Estate has a gorgeous cellar door in an old building which is lovely with a beautiful view. Some of the lovely people down in the Huon Valley and the Dontracasto Channel have some fantastic venues. I can't wait to see Johnny Hughes' new building at Mewstone. And Sailor Six Horse has a gorgeous uh, little space down in the um It's like a former cannery. Yeah, former cannery, yeah. So, Oh, look, Tassie's so beautiful. There's so many amazing people making amazing wines, beverages, food, uh, and, and just get out amongst Tassie. Yeah. Uh, so when I didn't live in Tassie, whenever I came back, uh, I'd make sure one of the things that I had to do was get up Mount Wellington. Oh, okay. So, I mean, driving to the top is fantastic, but going for a walk is even better yeah so stop can you off. climb up it or do you st go to the top and then do a walk around the top you can drive to the top and there is like a viewing uh, facility there um, but you can also there's lots of little stops on the way up uh, like the springs there's a gorgeous little cafe and a shipping container oh cool uh, and there's some really lovely walks from that point there at the springs uh, that are all quite short or long whatever you want um, but one of my favourite things to do is to park at the springs and take a walk. It's about 15 minutes to Sphinx Rock oh. and take a picnic. And oh. we have a beautiful view of Hobart. Yeah. Uh, and it's quite a, a small space, so it's a beautiful private experience with Mount Wellington. Awesome. And you can um, probably pick up lots of stuff for the picnic at like Salamanca Markets or oh, anywhere absolutely. around. We're sport for choice. Oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. that's oh, great. look, just get out there and... Get, get amongst it. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Get into wine country. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much, Greer. That's awesome. Thank you. The Derwent Valley is also famous and has rich convict history. Tasmania's first main road was actually built by the convict road gangs from Hobart via this region. New Norfolk is the main town here and it's known for its antiques and the whole region's known for its quality produce. So what wines to try? In both of these, Pinot Noir is the main variety to try and it is delicious. It's smooth, subtle red fruits. Greer touched on how there's different nuances depending on the region. Riesling and Chardonnay also feature prominently. It is very hard to decide which cellar doors to visit because there is just so many wonderful ones to choose from. In the Coal River Valley, as you're driving along towards the town of Richmond, 
You'll see cellar doors for Coal Valley Vineyard, Frogmore Creek, Puddle Duck, which I've heard allows you to bring your own food and you just buy their wine. Every Man and His Dog, they do a few unusual varieties. And just beyond Richmond is Nocton Wines and Pressing Matters, which is by appointment only. In the Derwent Valley, you'll find the award-winning Stefano Lubiano Wines and Derwent Estates in a beautiful 1820s limestone cottage. And as mentioned, you can visit Greer's Parents at Laurel Banks by appointment only. In this area is Marilla Wines, which is also located on the site of the Mona Museum. Yeah. Yeah. So other things to see and do in the regions. While you're in Tasmania, there are tons and tons of different bushwalks and hikes that you can do for all different lengths and abilities. I took Greer's advice and went up Mount Wellington and she was right. The view is fantastic from Sphinx Rocks. There's also octopus tree that she told me about as well, where the base of the tree looks like big octopus tentacles. We got a little bit lost and then the rain was starting to come. So we missed at that part, but we had a really great walk. So I strongly recommend that. I'll put a link in my show notes to the Tasmanian Parks website. In the Coal River, as we talked about, you have to visit the town of Richmond. It is a beautiful little historic town. In addition to the wine wall in the main square, there's the Pooseum, which is very fun and informative for kids and adults. And there's also the Richmond Botanical Store, which make all these beautiful skincare, hair masks, candles, etc. And speaking of museums, when you get to the Derwent Valley, you can't not visit Mona. The acronym stands for the Museum of Old and New Art. And it's extraordinary. While there were some families there when I visited, it's very much geared towards adults. My tip is to set aside a day and do everything they have on offer. Go for lunch at the Faro restaurant, which you can book, book into up to four weeks in advance. And they had musicians and dancers weaving around and they had this great light experience in a big sphere there that you go inside and lay down and have a hallucinative light show in between your courses. You can also book in for a private wine tasting in Marilla Wines and it's in a gorgeous bar area overlooking the back gardens. In Hobart, there's lots of museums. They've got their fabulous harbour and there's little boat rides that you can do to different ports nearby and there's Salamanca markets on a Saturday afternoon. The Dark Mofo Festival is on right now, so check it out in each June. It's in Hobart with lots of art, local food and wine and both Greer from The Quiet Mutiny and Johnny from New Stone, who you'll hear about in the next episode, will be there. This sounds like the most awesome festival taking over Hobart with art installations and food and wine and lots of stuff happening. Some quick stats. The Coal River Valley and the Derwent Valley are right near Hobart. You can fly into Hobart. It's about two hours from Sydney and one hour from Melbourne. You can also catch the overnight ferry from Melbourne, the Spirit of Tasmania. This brings you into Davenport, which is on the north of Tasmania, maybe about a three-hour drive from Hobart. There's lots of accommodation options. You can either stay in Hobart and do day trips to each of the regions, or if you're like me and you'd prefer to stay in the regions, there's lots of Airbnbs, there's farm stay, heritage houses, and beautiful hotels. If you're looking for something a bit upmarket, Prospect House in Richmond is superb and is located directly opposite Pooley Wines. So head on down to Tassie and enjoy some beautiful Pinot and art. Till next time, happy wine travels. Thank you so much for listening. You can subscribe now to get each episode as they drop. You can also check out this podcast on YouTube and see pictures of the region and the people I've spoken to. Go to winedelust.com.au. That's W-I-N-E-D-E-R-L-U-S-T dot com dot au for everything discussed today. You can also subscribe to my newsletter to hear all about my upcoming events and other news. Till next time, happy wine travels.